recording as well. OK, I would like to uh, welcome everybody to the Monday, August 23rd, 2021 Barrington Select Board meeting. Um, to start the meeting, we're going to do a call to order. Uh, roll call vote, starting with select person there. Uh, Daniel A at 334, Old Concord Turnpike. And then track 350. On road. George Bailey, 19 Chesley Drive. Tim Sakosha, 21 James Henry Drive. Uh, now, if we can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I wish we Okay, first up on the list um, is the agenda review and approval. Um, does the board have any discussion on this? Do you accept uh, items to go on to the next uh, agenda or do we cover that in a different portion? I don't remember how that was to be done. I didn't we tackle that on the last meeting? So, George, you can send me any topics you'd like to see on the September 13th agenda. Um, we can work with it and I'll uh, key in the chair. All right, I'll see you Monday. Yes, sir. Thank you. That answers my question. Thank you, Chair. OK, um, do we have uh, any other discussion or do we have a motion from the board? No, um, we accept uh, the agenda is written. Well, I got a question. OK, select person there. Uh, Jack Gill's going to take an uh, oath tonight. Is, is he uh, online or anything? Um, so um, person uh, there, uh, Mr. Gale will take his oath with the town clerk's office. Uh, that's just the listing of the documents the select board had signed uh, previously. So he was appointed at the last meeting and his oath was signed. Uh, so we're just listing it so it's transparent out in the public. All right, thank you. You're I'm all set. Okay. Second. Second. We got a we got a motion from Dan and a second from George. Roll call vote. Air aye. Manchurk aye. Bailey aye. Sakosha aye. And it passes. Okay. Next up is uh, public hearing. Um, no, where where we at? Yes, it was number four. Yeah. Yeah, public hearing. Um, the acceptance of the Barrington Fire Association funds. So this is simply the statutory process required to accept um, unanticipated yeah. revenue. Uh, it's per prescribed in RSA 31.95-B. One of the requirements for any amount over $10,000 is that this hearing is noticed in the newspaper. Um, it was noticed in the August 12th uh, edition of Foster's. Um, and this allows the, the town to accept and expend the $18,816.94 uh, towards the purchase of the UTV and equipment. You'll remember that was originally $16,000 and the groups uh, or the group graciously voted um, to increase the amount uh, due to unforeseen cost increases um, of, of the equipment and uh, the device or the vehicle and equipment. Yeah. I'll make the motion. I'm glad to accept the money and I appreciate the hard work. Okay, do we have a uh, second? Go ahead, Dan. Okay, roll call vote. Air aye. It's a kosher aye. And it passes. Um, hold, do you need public comment? Yes, thank you, select person Air. Okay, um, well, before we continue, I would like to open up uh, public comment. If you're viewing electronically, um, please raise your hand. This public comment is limited to the topic of the public right. hearing, which is the acceptance of the fire association funds. Excuse uh, me. Okay. I made a mistake. Thank you. Right. I think we're on the same. Okay. So can we <laughs> hold on, Chief. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Touch the things so I, I just wanted to, uh, so for people in the audience to listen to this, 
part of the problem, what we ran into is a price increase, but the other thing was is the cost of shipping some of that stuff out to California. So that a lot of it was had to do with, uh, again, increased prices over the last seven or eight months, but uh, we found shipping uh, the equipment, uh, the two skid units coming from California uh, were what triggered the uh, majority of the price increase. Thank you. Thank you. And thank the association for us. Very much so. Okay, any other uh, other comments, questions, concerns? The only comment I'm gonna make is I'm really glad they work with us. They really you know stepped right up and was necessary and it really is nice. It's good. Okay, we had a motion uh, from select person air. Yeah. And then we had a vote though. Yeah. So we're all set. And then we're gonna have to do another public hearing on this one too. Yep. Okay, so moving on to issuance of building permit on Longshores Drive, a private road for Luhan Haggerty, map 102, lot 77. Um, make, make a motion. Hold on. Um, I know we have John Huckins on here and we were waiting, waiting for um, the applicant to submit the uh, required plot plan for John to review. Um, John, can you touch on this a little bit? Yeah, the plot plan they sent does show that it complies with the setback. And what the guy actually did was he put benchmarks in and gave dimensions off of that because I have to have a foundation certification once that foundation does go in. Okay, and you had adequate time to review and it looks good to you? Yeah. Select person here. Yeah, it's in the building envelope and everything. Is Jimmy's above. Okay. Select person Bailey. If I recall correctly, we asked them to give us a certified plot plan, and we have not received that as of yet. We do not have a certified plot plan. We have received two other plans that clearly state this is not to be used for that particular purpose. And we're asking us to circumvent what our rules are, and I don't think we should do this. I think this should either be denied or it should be postponed to the next meeting and given him another chance to provide us with a plot plan. As stated right here on, on this right here, it's it's not for that use. So we don't have a complete package from this individual. Um, and, and, and my that's other, the stamp uh, plan. Hold on. Mr. Hold on, Bagley. John. Let, let George finish, please. And the and the other thing is, is how can we have a certified plot plan? Does that mean they have been building already and they've had the foundation is already in for the, for us to get the uh, foundation uh, plan? We've got somebody to put a stamp on something that's either built without approval from this board or it's a plot plan that's done without taking proper measurements because it's not there. So either way you look at it, this can't make it work because it's not what we looked for. We asked for a certified plot plan. We didn't get it because this denotes that it's not a plot plan. Now, or can it be used for one? Thank you. Okay. Um, Select person there. Being a builder and stuff, and then if they're the benchmarks and they're within the envelope, that's good enough for me to go in there and work. There. And then once I get it in, then they come back and certify it, George. I, 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 I could put it in the wrong place. Dan, I, I I know that. Excuse my, me, my, Excuse me, guys. We we got your point, Dan. We got George's point. I would like to give John a chance to rebuttal to uh, George's comments and concerns. Yeah, a certified plot plan is a plan that shows they can put the house in and meet the setbacks because it's less than an acre. Once the foundation goes in, then I get a foundation certification that shows the exact location of it. That is actually showing where they're going to put it. That's the reason why they can't say that it's certi It's a, certi a foundation certification because it's not there. They're just showing that it's in, and that's a certified plot plan. They're two different things. They sound similar, but they're two different things. Mr. Chairman, it states right on here. Footing certification of lot 77, tax map 102. That's what this says, and that's what he put his stamp on. 
and we haven't had it in there. So what John says is correct, but this is incorrect because it's not nothing in the ground to give us a certification for. That's why I asked them either we deny it or I suggest that we move it on for the next meeting and give them a chance to provide us with the material we're supposed to have. I know at the last meeting, that's what we said, and we don't have it yet. Okay. Well, we are a board of uh, five. Today we are four. Um, is there any other comments or concerns? I'll make the motion to accept it on information provided. Well, before that, we have to go to public comment. So um, I'd like to open up public comment. Um, for those who are chiming in electronically, we have uh, Tiffany here and myself looking to see if anybody's going to chime in via Microsoft Teams or via phone. Um, give it about 30 seconds and we'll go from there. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and close public comment. Um, we have a motion from select person air. Do we have a second? Excuse me. Okay, we have a second from select person Mantrek. Roll call vote. So air aye. Mantrek aye. Bailey, no. Sakosha aye. Mr. Chair, I just want to clarify with uh, Mr. Ayer that his motion includes the conditions one through eight listed in the town administrator's report dated August 23rd. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if yes, I, I may, I must say to the rest of the board members that voted yes on this, you can put completely erase the rules of the town that people had voted for to have this item taken care of. This it clearly states that it is not a plot plan and it's not a legal document. So I have said that. I'd like to make sure that goes into the record because he has not provided it. And I, I and believe we did, that, that is and we noted. did and we did err in the fact of approving this. Thank you. Okay. On to uh, the consent agenda. Um, this requires a unanimous approval. Agreed. Uh, for the consent agenda. Okay. Do we have second. a second? We have a select person. Uh, second from select person Bailey. Uh, roll call vote. Air aye. Mantra aye. Bailey aye. Sakosha aye. Consent agenda is approved. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to note that there was one uh, small correction uh, to the minutes noted by select person Mantrek, um, and, and that correction, uh, non substantial, um, will be included in the approved minutes. OK, um, this is the part of meeting where we have appointments, but um, there's no appointments on our agenda. Nothing came in last minute, correct? OK, um, this is going to move us on to public comment. And we have uh, yours truly, Chief Walker, coming up. I uh, apologize for this not getting on the agenda, but I was approached today by uh, Upscope uh, Act 358. Uh, traditionally, in the last uh, five or six years, they've done a uh, membership drive, and they've used the park uh, slash side yard of the uh, public safety building. It's usually done uh, at an early uh, September Saturday morning. There's somebody from the fire department uh, that's not on duty there, so that. Um, if they need to go and use the bathroom or not, something. And uh, they approached me today. They'd like to do it on Saturday, September 11th, from probably uh, either 9 to noon or 10 to 1 or something like that. So, um, I'm, you know, because it's a town building, I'm looking for you folks a blessing to allow them to do that. Can I make a comment on it? Uh, could they be clearly posted what's going on over there? Yep. So if someone's coming out of the dump, there's no confusion. Yeah. They usually stay over off by the smoking sign and set up a thing. Uh, some of the stuff the scouts do so the kids that are interested in coming in can see what they're doing. So yeah, I don't see that being a problem. No. Anybody have any other comments on this? It's a good idea. Okay. You guys are all set. Thank you very much. Not a problem. Uh, you see anything coming in on the World Wide Web? Okay. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close public comment. Okay, on to staff reports. Administrator McIver. Yes, thank you. Um, I read through the uh, August work anniversaries at the first meeting in August, so I won't belabor that point. Um, I will just uh, extend some appreciation to the patients of our uh, public safety uh, personnel, both police and fire, over the last few days. Uh, obviously, anybody that's driven by Franklin Pierce Highway has seen uh, the new blacktop in the parking lot there. Um, and they were, um, you know, the, the paving window uh, is, is always kind of a question mark, and um, they worked hard to uh, work out the logistics to make sure that that could happen. Um, also, huge uh, appreciation to the road agent, Mark Morrow, um, and Advance for getting that done, uh, working through the weekend um, to, to get that um, facility buttoned up uh, so we can return to normal operations. So a lot of cooperation from a lot of folks, and um, I, I am glad that we have that project behind us and can move forward to um, other things. That's all I have. Thank you. How about me moving the town lands to my property Saturday? That was oh. very gracious, select person there. Very gracious. <laughs> okay. Administrator Cottle. Okay. Um, well, let's keep a good thing rolling while we're on it. Um, that brings up old business. Um, Ultra Terrain Vehicle Award update. Um, I called Connor uh, this, this afternoon and we had discussed what gone on. <laughs> where we had originally awarded um, the purchase of the UTV to Venture Power Sports. Um, Chief, would you like to come up? You appear so on the and while Chief Walker is coming up, um, when I was the board, as I was reviewing this, I had the question, why REP for the trailer? Um, long of the short is there, you just correct me if I'm wrong, Chief, um, our, I forget his name, who put the package together originally. Um, John Janelle, yeah. John Janelle, he had put the package together. He gathered all the information, whether it's UTV, trailer, um, skids everything and what he had did was he had packaged everything together so if venture didn't have a trailer um, but there was two people that bid a trailer he picked the best trailer and he put that with ventures package so what he was trying to do was save the board some work and by putting the packages together so that it was easier for us to see the apples to apples packages um if you do you have anything else to add chief no that that's 100 percent correct and and again it's 100 percent my fault captain janelle did a good job to cheat together for me i mistakenly forgot to realize that they not everybody ventured didn't bid everything and the reason there is a lower bid on the trailer uh but the, they, they didn't meet the spec. We wanted a steel trailer. The lower bid came in for an aluminum trailer, uh, and REP was the low bid on a steel trailer. Gotcha. Any uh, questions, concern from the board? We amend the ultra terrain vehicle bid award to the $24,622.94 for power sport. Tracks, roof, and windshield, $4,195 to REP Enterprises for the trailer, and up to $5,999 to CEP Fire Pump Manufacturing for the skids, for a total of up to $34,816.94. Do we have a second? Okay, hey, roll call vote. Here I. Patrick, I. Sakosha, I. We, uh, we thank you very much uh, for allowing us to get through this process and on uh, getting that stuff ordered. We're excited to have a new addition, a uh, new tool to help out the, uh, the visitors and uh, residents of the town of Barrington. We very much appreciate it. 
Okay, on to 21 uh, tax deeding. Uh, each year, the tax collect collector must present deeds to the select board for properties which have outstanding balances uh, back three or more years. Um, a, in 2021, a property is eligible for tax deeding if it has an unpaid balance on the 2018 lead. Um, do we have any discussion on this board? Any questions, concerns? Okay. Um, do I have a motion to? Okay. okay. We have a motion from Select Person Air to authorize the assurance of a 2021 deed waiver for Map 23, Lot 46. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, roll call vote. Air aye. Man, sure, aye. Air aye. Sakosha. And Mr. Chair, if I could, um, we're fortunate to have a, a few more properties come off the deed list um, that have come in and paid today. Um, the deed date is the 26th. Um, we're hopeful that, um, well, we're hopeful that the remaining properties on the list um, we'll come forward and, and pay the amount due uh, to stave off deeding on August 26th. Um, so we're we're hopeful, glad the list is shrinking, uh, and it definitely continues with the trend. I know I've talked a lot about um, the financial stability in the town of Barrington. We've seen some of the lowest numbers on tax delinquency, people paying their taxes late the last year and a half. It's continued to decrease. Same thing with deeding. Um, you know, this list was uh, three times as long a couple of years ago. Um, and so a lot of credit goes to the tax collector to work with taxpayers uh, to take paying their taxes seriously, get them on plans so they pay their bills um, before it goes to lien or before it goes to deed. Um, so I'm, I'm very glad with where we are. Like I said, I'm hopeful everybody will pay, but very likely we'll have um, a, a small handful uh, that will will go to deed. The town will take ownership. Um, and proceed accordingly. Thank you. Excellent. Um, next on the list is uh, Recreation Slide Bid Award. You guys ready for this big news? Um, bids for the surplus equipment were due at noon on Monday, August 23rd, 2021. Um, details about the advertisement and process can be found on the Barrington Town website. Um, the bids were opened uh, 1 p.m. on Monday, August 23rd. And um, we need a couple of motions to award some bids for the uh, slides from the recreation department. You have a dollar Mr. amount. Mr. Chair. Yep. Um, unfortunately, we expected to open bids at one o'clock today, uh, but we didn't receive any. Um, so so kind of <laughs> sad news there. Uh, Jesse had our, our esteemed recreation director, had a lot of residents reach out to her when they had seen the slides and say, hey, you know, can we buy them? And she sent the information out. We advertised it, uh, but but nobody coughed up a, a sealed bid to, to buy them. Um, so I think the board has a couple of options. Um, in addition to extending the the advertisement of the bid, um, we also uh, we actually uh, made contact with uh, um, a farm, a local farm um, that experienced some recent hardship that was looking for some slides. Um, this is Scammon Farm. You might remember about a year ago, they had a fire um, they, longer than a year ago. Okay. Um, so, Scammon, S-C-H. Yeah, what, what road is it on? It's on Stratum. Oh, it's in Stratum? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they're looking for a couple of slides. Um, and so if if the select board was feeling um, generous, the select board could authorize, um, you know, uh, donating essentially, um, disposing of the slides um, to the scam and farm, seeing that we didn't have any bids. I know the recreation director's on, so yeah, I think it'd be appropriate to give her a chance to weigh in, uh, but it's up to the select board how we proceed. Before we jump over this, um, I don't think this has to be long and drawn out. Um, I would, uh, I would like to run this by the board. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's going to be sealed. Um, we <laughs> need to be put in an envelope, Dan. Um, um, Mr. Mr. Ayer had, uh, put down a uh, bid for the slides, but I would like to see if the board is up to, and I, we can give Jesse the power to either donate the slides or, or get them to a family 
or um, you know, another municipality in need. Um, do you guys agree with that? So moved. Um, I'll make a motion. I just did. No, uh, can I correct your George, please? Select personnel. I'd like to make a motion to donate the slides to the people in Stratum, and I'm willing to donate $100 towards the recreation fund. Okay, Jerry Noble, and we can accept that, no problem, correct? Yes. Okay, um, we need a second. Seconded by select person Bailey. There I. Sakoshi. Jesse. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Okay. I, sorry, I was just trying to unmute. I didn't want to interrupt anybody, but thank you very much, Dan. That um, is very, very appreciative. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, Steve Dan does have a kind, uh, kind heart, you know, at a, about as big as a country mile wide. About as big as a chin. Um, okay. Now we are. That brings us on to new business. Um, first up on the list is building department vehicle replacements. Um, we have John Huckings, our building official, on. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about what you found? Mr. Huckins? Yeah, okay. So I reached, I took off the car that we have now. I was looking at getting something equivalent to that. And it was the Ford Explorer, the Knox uh, from Chevy, and the, um, the other one that was the GMC, um, the terrain. They're all considered equal vehicles. And I needed all wheel drive because of places that we go in town. So I asked every one of the dealers on that list to supply me with a base model car that has all wheel drive. And I put it in order of pricing that came back. The lowest one was considered with, was directly from the owner of the company. Um, the next two were um, like contract bids that were done. And you notice the next two are exactly the same amount of money. And they're also 2022 models. Okay. Um, my uh, my comments here um, to you is, you know, you as well as I know, you know, I'm in the trades. Um, I meet with multiple inspectors, different municipalities, different states. Um, I do see the more established towns um, going either um, towards uh, hybrid cars. Um, uh, we're not at, at an electric level by any means, but um, if we could find something that's not an SUV, because if we if we look at the practical standpoint, um, I'm not sure if you find yourself with you know at four you know three or four passengers that will go to you with a job site, or if you have to bring somebody. Um, but I think this vehicle is usually used for one person to go to different inspections and you know handle the the town business. So um, I would like to see um, you know. If the the board would want to entertain almost an all-wheel drive car as well to see if we can get that down a little bit cheaper and maybe we can get a little bit more um, better gas mileage, uh, a little more economical. Um, those are my comments, questions, concerns. Uh, select person there. Um, well, sometimes you have to bring a ladder. Sometimes it's to do uh, inspections and stuff. Um, I'm not. Well, yeah, where well, uh, yeah, they do, but I think they need to bring a ladder sometimes. And I brought up the idea to Connor about um, the police rotating vehicles. There's a problem with we're, building inspector. We're, we're not on the police right I know. Now. I'm just saying. Buy a vehicle. They're not putting, they only put eight to 10,000 miles a year on it. They rust out before they do it. So if we can get in a cycle, and when the police have a vehicle come up, the SUVs are coming up to another four years. But if it was there, the, the building department can get a used SUV from the police lab, please don't get a new one. And then in another when another rotation comes up, so they won't be rusting out. Because the mile is not an issue. I'm uh, I'm okay with that. I mean, you know, for for when it maybe comes up. Right now, it's not. It won't work right now. I don't. Know. Sure. Uh, no. 
Um, so the vehicle that is currently going out on rotation right now um, for the Dodge that is coming in that you guys approved a little bit ago, uh, inspection is due in September. Dodge won't be in until probably December. I'm going to ground that vehicle because it won't take a sticker. Um, it's making noises that I can't even tell you what it is right now. Uh, the brakes are bucking, transmission slipping, got 123,000 on it. Not a good alternative for John. If you want to wait until next year, which I don't think John does because I think his vehicle may be in the same spot as mine, the next vehicle to go next year is the Unit 2, which is a 2013 Ford Taurus off the top of my head, 120-ish, give or take, 112-ish. All-wheel drive? All-wheel drive. All-wheel drive. Uh, so the current Explorer that is going out is... is not really an option. And it's the one that the deer hit, so the fender's still bent up and stuff. Too. Thank you, Chief. And Mr. Uh -huh. Chair, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, I just wanted to to address Dan. Dan, I, I love the creativeness, and I do agree with something like that when the time is right for it. I'm so for that. I know the time wasn't right. Yeah, yeah time's not right, but I do agree with that. Um, select person Bailey, and Thank then you. we'll afterwards. Yeah. It seems that we've had this discussion before, gentlemen, about uh, uh, buying certain things and not buying certain things. And we came to the conclusion that we really have to depend upon what our department heads have brought forward. And I know that uh, John has put a lot of work into this and figured out the vehicle that he uh, would best uh, suit his business with the price that we're going to get. If I recall, I think it's $2,300 more he's got to put into that car in order to get it running. And I don't know if that would sticker it or not because I'm not a mechanic that does the stickering. But I feel that uh, as a comment was made about a ladder, but you've also got to have other uh, pieces of equipment he's going to have with him. He might have uh, meters. He might have other devices to take with him. And he also might have to have a pair of boots and a raincoat and other stuff that fits in the car. So I think this vehicle would be suitable, uh, Mr. Chairman. So uh, I really feel that... Uh, uh, careful consideration on my part. I, I feel that I would support this. Thank you. Okay. Connor. Yes, thank you. Um, to Suckburst Air's point, a lot of communities um, build up a rotation, uh, whether it's their police department and building department or other code. Um, and for that to work in Barrington, it would re require a rotation that takes a cruiser out of frontline service for the police department at say 60,000 miles. Um, so not when they're their end of their useful life in the police department. And so I think it is something that cr creative that the town should consider. Um, you know, it, as long as we buy a new one now in 10 years, um, when, when we will likely need to replace the vehicle again. Um, so I think it's point well taken, worth looking into. And if we proceed this direction, we've got some time uh, to work out the scheduling and logistics. Thank you. Okay, so I'm not doubting that we don't need um, that we need to re replace this vehicle. Um, Another thing, don't you stick a shot? You take that number. I'm going to say 25 grand. Divide that by 10. Probably 2,500. Okay. I don't know. I would like to see because um, I would like to ask a question to to Mr. Huckins. Um, do you find yourself strapping an extension ladder um, onto the current uh, Ford Escape? Um, do you, are you lifting that um, you and or um, our part-time inspector? Uh, are you guys going up onto stuff and, you know, are you guys putting ladders on buildings going up to do inspections? If Sounds you're talking, John, you're still muted. muted. Okay. Oh, wait, can you hear um, me now? There yes. Okay. We carry a step ladder in the back seat of the car all the time. We use it quite often. We do only step where we have to get around and look at things. If we have to go higher than that, we usually use equipment on site. Um, I would say... 
maybe six or seven times a year I have to go up an extension ladder higher than that. But usually they have some kind of temporary stairs or something put in for us to get around to get access for our inspections. But we do the step ladder and we have a bunch of handouts and material so we can show people the code when they question it. Okay, um, so you're, you're probably talking like a, a four foot ladder. Yes, it is. OK, so I know the size of a four foot ladder and the size of a, a compact car. Um, I do know that you could put a ladder in there. Um, so I, I'm going to say to the board, that's how I feel on mine. Um, but, you know, it's we're a board of five. Do we have a motion to either accept John? Could I make a statement on that? What was that? OK, the, the reason why I think there would be an issue with the compact car is there's places that we go in the winter and some of the roads that we have to go on that a compact car wouldn't necessarily have enough ground clearance to where we'd be dragging on the bottom. On the 60 mile roads too. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Okay, well, do, do the, oh, go ahead. I'd like to make a motion to replace the 11 year old building department vehicle by purchasing a base model 2021 Equinox from Hilltop Chevrolet or up to $25,000 using surplus funds from the 2021 operating budget coded to the incident fund. Second that motion. Roll call vote. Air aye. Answer aye. Bailey aye. Master Coach aye. Yes. Okay, next up on the list. Uh, before, before, question, Mr. Chair. Should we consider uh, having that undercoated? I don't know if we still do that or not. I know the vehicles, the last two vehicles I bought for my personal use, I had them undercoated. Do you think it'd be wise if we had that? I, I think, I don't know. I'm just asking. It's an outright this off. Yeah, well, let, let's take a look. Let's see. Get a look. I know he had listed the specs, but, you know, the frames are usually painted yeah. nowadays. So, okay. Um, Good. Good select person air real quick. I personally. I think we get a better deal if they've done a not a deal to have done a maintenance. We get a better quality job. Okay. Well, when uh, when we purchase know. the vehicle and comes up, and you know, Mr. Huckins looks at what we need to uh, address with that vehicle, we'll go from there. Um, but next up on the list is the police department staffing plan and the 2022 budget considerations. And uh, coming to the mic is Chief. Joy. Uh, Mr. Chair, while he gets set up and gets the uh, presentation going, um, similar to, to the approach that we took with the fire department, the real goal here with the select board and the community is to present what the chief and I and, and others in the depart in the police department um, feel are the, the objectives necessary to maintain success in the police department. And so the priority is really to get the select board the information that they need um, to also support that objective, um, to support the goal that we have, um, specifically being the, the uh, dual patrol coverage 24-7 um, with staffing, you know, to be able to fill for vacations and trainings, illnesses and all the rest. Um, and so the chief, and I know he had help within the department, did a fantastic job putting this presentation together. But keep in mind, that's the goal. Um, we'd like to include something in the 2022 budget um, with the select board's support. Um, and as I indicated in, in my town administrator report, um, I support the objective. I support the chief's recommended path to get there. Um, and if you have uh, any other uh, budget questions unrelated to the operations of the police department, I'd be happy to hear them. Thank you. Chief George. So what I'm presenting is nothing new uh, for the folks that have been around. You've heard this before um, in 2018. Some of you were sitting there. I mean, not so much, but some of you were sitting here in 2018 when Chief Williams presented. You're going to see a lot of the same material, quite frankly, because I wasn't going to recreate the wheel. Um, when we did this in 2018, the numbers told us that we should be at about 13.5, currently not. And Chief Williams prepared the board then for coming back in 2020-ish for another person. 
Clearly, we didn't do that. I did not do that because of the circumstances we were presented with. So here we are now. Um, going back before Chief Williams, for those of you who are here in 2000, definitely not you. Um, and what I have in my hand is the December 31st, 2000 Town of Barrington Annual Report. A couple of you might remember that. Uh, Chief Conway prepared the report, and I'll just quote from the manual. The staff's been extremely busy this past year. National averages for police coverages are one officer for every 500 people. We have an approved staff of seven full-time and one part-time officer serving a town of over 6,500 people. The staffing shortage frequently results in delayed response due to the necessity to prioritize calls. We understand that every incident is important to the reporting caller, and we attempt to deal with the calls as soon as possible when received. We are dealing with a situation and a problem that is in excess of 21 years old. So that's the historics. I don't know why that's not there we go. I'm just too fast. So the objective spelled out again, I know everybody's had time to review it, so I'm not going to kill everybody reading everything. My objective is to maintain double coverage and patrol all shifts seven days a week. That's not really too much to ask. Um, there's the mathematic breakdown. That's 336 patrol hours. Currently, with part time with full time personnel, we can cover 280. It's 56 hours difference for those doing the math. Um, the addition of one is not going to make it. Our part time and the per diem gets us close if everybody is working and everybody is present. So again, that's if everybody is working and everybody is present, not vacations, sick time, training, or admin. And admin is important throughout this. Justification, we'll see these slides in order. Demographics, staffing surveys, prior staffing recommendations, staffing deficiencies, and the current activity levels and demands on staff. Um, Going to have a lot of fun with that one. It's not in the presentation today. Town of Barrington, 198.4 persons per square mile of land area. Barrington is 46.7 square miles. 8576 was the population in the 2010 census. We are now at 9326 for the current population. Personally feel that Barrington may have had some unresponsive folks. I would have cut my life if we were over 10,000, but that's neither here nor there. That shows an 8.7% increase over the decade. And those are our major state routes. Uh, it, about two, two, we'll see that later. Barrington Police Department staff, myself, Chief Police, Deputy Chief Brooks is seated behind me. Two patrol supervisors currently, one detective, excuse me, two slotted patrol officers, one detective, 6.5 patrol officers beyond those. So on the street, you have 8.5 folks right now. Um, as it stands, the supervisor spot that was approved, the classification, be patrol, uh, Detective Sergeant Farber, built the detective share. PD officer trends, we're gonna work backwards. We are currently 11.5. In 2018, we reached that number, thanks to a couple of you gentlemen that are sitting on the board right now, thank you. 2008 to 2018, nothing. We remained flat at 10.5. 2005 to 2008, we were 9.5. I am using 2005 as the number based on the budget increase that I found in the town reports. That jives with my memory and that makes sense. If I am off by a year, I will apologize in advance. I did that based on numbers. Chief Conway prior to that was nice enough to include in his narrative where we were at. 2002 to 2005, 8.5 people. 2000 to 2002, 7.5. So what you see back then is a trend every three years of increasing one officer. There's our population versus police officers. Just a nice little diagram there to show you what we have. There's the up. The dots represent the population <coughs> and the increase in population. You'll note the flat trend from 2008 to 2018. Went up in 2018, and we have been flat for the last three years. That's our full time equivalent to 1,000 population that TA McIver was nice enough to prepare for me. And again, you can see the downward trend in that graph. I'm happy to stop, Mr. Ayer. Absolutely. I thought we were at 12 and a half. Are you telling the officers that we're down? Or? No, sir. We are at 11 and a half total. That's what it's been. I thought it was yeah. And just to clear, we should be at 13, according to the project. At least. Chief Williams. At least. Staffing by population. So you're going to see highlighted here. This is down through um, the full time officers. I have confirmed with the respective departments. I don't know where I lost on the side. Uh, the populations differed. Um, again, there's some back and forth when I when I texted the chiefs and talked to them about their full time officers. They also cut me a population. 
the populations were off a little bit. So if you look on the right hand side, I took everything off the New Hampshire employment security site. I figured that was a safe basis for populations. So everything is consistent. The one lone exception is R9326. I took that from our current census. The other numbers are from just prior. So there probably is an uptick, uptick in their populations as well that's unaccounted for. I just wanted to be transparent. Yes, sir. Uh, when you get to Durham, does that include the offices at UNH? No, sir. That is Durham Police Department. Um, I did not include the University of New Hampshire. The I probably should have. Armed and that's yes, the University Police Department is a fully certified police department. Um, they operate under the policing authority of Chief Kelly in the town of Durham. But if you added the UNH PD in there, at least another 20 strong, give That's or take, part, plus more part and then part timers. And obviously the population is increasing. Thank you. Um, so you'll see if you look down through the full time for 1,000 residents, again, it's just a quick scan down through the town of Barrington, despite the fact that we're one of the largest land masses, has the smallest full time for 1,000 residents. We are, in fact, well under the county average of 1.78. Okay. Is there any comments, questions from the board? Ed? Stratford was part of Barrington. And it's exactly the same square miles. Okay. Um, I didn't know the square mileage was the same. Yes, I knew they used to be part of Barrington. So the town of Stratford currently is budgeted for six. Um, their population, you can see, they average 1.42 tops per thousand versus our 1.17 um you know you you always bring um good quality um um <laughs> let me start over um the way you presented this was awesome as most of your presentations are um you know those numbers are concerning i mean if you look at durham durham was probably the closest population that was over um, they had the the 16 officers for, or what was it, just there? Um, 21. 21 officers for 16,000 people. We're at, we're at 9,000, we only have 11. And even at Farmington, um, they have 14 officers with, with almost 7,000. Um, I, I want to go back one, Dan, because you said 12. We have 12 bodies in the police department, and I want to be transparent about that. Well, maybe it was cut Katie. Uh, no, we counted Scott part-time 0.5 right. and you'll refer, you'll see me refer to 11.5 scott's a 0.5 even though scott is a full person i know i thought we're at 12. My, apo my apologies and i just I caught that five. yeah no i i these studies are based on full-time and full-time equivalents so i wanted to clarify that before we went on and i do apologize for interrupting thank you, person bailey thank you i just want to uh on your last comment but the demographic graphics for durham is, is a lot different for the uh, large uh, university contingency and everything else it's not really include in the population. I know you have UNH moving from off campus. I don't know how uh, the chief there handles the UNH police department, how he integrates in with uh, problems in, in town. I don't know that. So I mean, so I think that all the students, it, it makes it makes it change. So at 1.28 in the population, you know, I, I still see so, I still see where we're going, so. So perfectly good reason. That's why I brought up Farmington, where they're a smaller town, smaller population than us, almost a, a 2,000, a little over 2,000 difference. Um, and they have 14 officers compared to our 11. So I think we've kind of, you know, hit all, um, you know, aspects of this. Uh, this was just a discussion. There's no vote needed on this. Um, final discussion from, from the board, uh, select person there. Yeah. Well, one thing about Farmington. Well, uh, it's going to go back to you. So. Well, history. Here really can be a Farmington either because back in the day, they had some issues there, a lot more than issues the bench ever had. That's why they have that police force. Our call volume is higher than that of Farmington. <laughs> okay. Now, not back now, in the day. Back in the day. Excuse me? No, I'll select I'll person manager. It would be interesting, not only for us, but we have it here. Uh, for the public, if we let Joy finish his presentation, I think that uh, the transparency as far as the public is concerned. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to have a decade's worth of activity for you guys, and I apologize. Uh, that is an unwieldy process. If, if it is necessary, I can certainly gather that data for the last decade, but I meant to have that. Um, 
average wise, what we just saw was averages in Stratford County uh, nationally. And I'm going to include two numbers here, and this is going to kind of play on later on in the graphs. We currently have a population of 9326. So the DOJ, uh, the Department of Justice for the Northeast New England, sets officer averages per thousand. And what you have for jurisdictions less than 10,000, which is where we fit, the DOJ will tell you we should have 2.8 per thousand. Um, where we are so close, and I have tried to give the town the benefit of the doubt in all cases, if you look at the DOJ averages for towns above 10,000, we're right there. We're knocking on 10,000. Um, they're 0.19. So what I did, again, just for the sake of argument, is I averaged those together, and instead of rolling with the point, the point, the 2.8 average or the 1.9, um, you'll see the difference. 26.11 for the first number, 17.7 for the second. I averaged those together and came out with 21.91. Um, again, giving the benefit of the doubt to the town. Clearly, I am not here asking for 10 coppers. That's not my intent. Um, but I want to show you where the DOJ tells us where we should be at. Get too trigger happy here. So the New Hampshire DOJ average is 2.82. Uh, again, that is taken off the 2019 UCR Table 77. Uh, it's referenced, it's on their website. It's a federal number. If we look at that number, 26.29 is the number. Clearly, I'm not here asking for 15 cops. UNH Carsey, um, this was a study done back in 2015. I've seen no update from them, so I'm using their old numbers. Um, by UNH Carsey's numbers in Stratford County, we should have 15.85. Um, they're approximately 1.7 per thousand. So again, UNH Carsey did this study prior. I feel that's a pretty good rate. And if you remember that 15.85 number, I'll show you why I think that's a good number here shortly. Bartel formula, Dan remembers the Bartel formula. I believe George will remember the Bartel formula. I'm not going through it again. Um, you, I hope by now you trust my addition and my numbers. Um, the Bartel formula is not generic, which is what we've just been through, those are averages. The Bartel formula is specific to jurisdictions based on activity, uh, based on time off for employees based on schedules. This is a mathematical equation to get us where we need to go. We went through it all back in 2018. If you don't trust me, I've got the numbers. I'm happy to show them to you. I'm hoping you just trust me. I compared and contrasted the calls for service so you can see the difference. Uh, 2016, which is where we based our numbers for the 2018 study, we had 8,118 calls for service minus motor vehicle stops. Last year, we had 10,730. Motor vehicle stops, 2016, 2582. I don't know what that five is at the end. 2582. I don't know where that other five came from. We did not have 25,000 stops. Um, last year, we had 2509, difference of about 80. Last year, first few months of the year, when we came into COVID, we got back on motor vehicle because we didn't know if COVID was transferring on driver's licenses or any of that stuff. So we had a several month period. We weren't doing a lot of motor vehicle. I will tell you this year, we are on track to do an excess of 3,200 motor vehicle stops. So I'm still going to leave that 25 number up there. It is data. It is the data we have to work with. I just wanted to explain it. Index-related investigations, 72 versus 81. Um, those are the serious crimes that you really want folks investigating. Sexual assaults, child pornography, burglaries, robberies, all that kind of stuff. Non-index investigations, 210 to 217. Um, we're going to talk specifically about those here in a minute, too. So when we did staff in 2018, the staffing requirement, not including the chief of police, showed us 13.5. Now it's showing 16.34. That is why I think this is relatively accurate. I'm within one cop on both studies. And I'm still not here asking for five cops. So, ten, right? uh, what's that? It's 10. Yeah, originally it was 10. So the Bartel formula, <laughs> if it'll advance here for me, I can go back one. The Bartel formula took into account those index versus non index crimes. And I want to get into that for a minute. Showing up on my screen. There we go. Um, when we do this formula, the index related investigations, uh, we figure an average of five hours per investigation. Five. That's what we base the formula off of. That's where we get our numbers from. I'm here to tell you right now that today, today, uh, Detective Sergeant Barber drew a case yesterday. An arrest was made and an investigation continues. She spent four hours this morning doing a search warrant for that case because it involved a computer. 
She spent the rest of her afternoon today working on that case. We figure five hours per investigation. Detective Sergeant Barber has almost 10 hours today into one case, and she's not even stuck. We just turned a case over to the Secret Service involving a fraud in town that has man weeks of investigation invested into it, not five hours. Uh, I have a theft sitting on my desk right now that, unfortunately, I had to apologize to the lady last week for triaging calls that I have a few hours into, just a couple right now, but we're two, two and a half hours, and I'm nowhere near completion. I had to call that lady last week and let her know that I was only halfway through it because of prioritizing calls. Five hours is what we have used for the number. Five hours doesn't even get us started in a lot of these investigations. Um, a basic burglary with no leads, we will spend that amount of time on just following up with pawn shops and everything else. Um, if folks want me to put just five hours of investigation into an assault, I'd be happy to do it. No, I wouldn't. So there's your basic breakdown comparison from 2018 study to today uh, with the population overlay. Population's done nothing but go up. Your green line, again, so there's that drop. That's the green line I was talking about. That's the DOJ New England. We didn't average that last time. So that is the one factor that we see a drop in. I guess it doesn't much matter because it's still up over 20. Every other indicator has gone up except the little red line, which is our staff. There's population versus cops. There's where the bar tele formula shows us we should be. That nice flat line is where we are. The blue line is the population. This document was not prepared by me. Um, this is the, why that's overlaid with the bar tele formula. Uh, nope, it's not, I'm sorry. Um, this wasn't prepared by me. I was hoping that um, Chairman Knapp was gonna be here today because his name was on this document. Uh, some, this was prepared sometime in about 2018 and some of you other gentlemen may be able to educate me a little bit on what it is. I'm not 100% sure, but it was not prepared with me. This was prepared before my time. And again, I'm just gonna quote from that based on the work that was done for this study and put in print in this document, which is online. Uh, based on four police staffing summaries, the US DOJ, Northeast New England Average, US Department of Justice, New England Average, Carsey School, and Bartell Formula, the town should increase the police department to include 16 full-time sworn officers just short of two per 1,000 within the next five to 10 years. So if this was prepared in 2018 or 2017, which I recall, we are now four to five years deep. 16, this should include two additional patrol sergeants, two additional patrol sergeants, one school resource officer and two patrol officers. Uh, determine if the funding set for 2020 to cover the school resource officer, 50% school, 50% economical, feasible and responsible approach and plan accordingly. Uh, that's kind of not really relevant at this point. They want a different direction. Monitor Barrington's population growth over the next five to 10 years and determine if additional detective sergeant position is needed. Thank you. I took care of that a couple weeks ago and I appreciate it. So thank you guys for that, folks. Uh, determine what social and rehabilitative services which could reduce the reliance of police force and help address some of the underlying causes of crime could benefit from additional funding. Um, that has to do with a lot of mental health, which so I remember Mantrek and I have been back and forth about. So we're also working on that. Uh, I've kind of done my part on c &D. Staffing deficiencies. This is July 21, 2021 to present. We had 41 open patrol shifts. About 50% of those were backfilled. That means you had 21 patrol shifts that were not backfilled. That does not mean the town was not covered. We had coverage. We did not have sufficient coverage. At least 12 of those night shifts were left partially or completely single coverage. Uh, scheduled single coverage from 06 to 14 currently, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, and from 06 to 16 on Wednesday. Uh, those are open. Those are single coverage. Right now, I am the second unit Monday through Wednesday. Last week, I was the single unit from Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. It was me. Um, there it is. It's up there. From 2010 to 2015, our average level of patrol was 18 years. 2019, 6.1 years. Today, it's just about four. I'm not taking anything away from my staff. I have a fantastic staff, police officers working in this town. A patrolman or lady with four to five years of experience cannot accomplish what a copper with 18 years on the job can. They just can't do it. They don't have the breadth of knowledge. Um, so when you ask me why we were able to do what we were able to do 2008 to 2018, 
that's why we were able to do it for the first five years of that decade, because we were dealing with cops that had been around for literally decades. Uh, calls and staff impact. So this is a slide and we're gonna go off the reservation a little bit here and I'll apologize up front. Right now we have 201 arrests to date. Last year was 183 total. So we're already above that. To date, 6477 total calls for the first half of the year. Last year we did 13,239. So we're gonna beat that. June 30th, 2021 to present, seven DUI arrests. Uh, we had a reckless conduct involving a firearm where the individual discharged that firearm during the course of the confrontation. We've had six domestic violence arrests to include a stabbing, strangulation, uh, firearm involved with a potential standoff, and one domestic violence incident on Scruton Pond Road that I handled without backup. Um, ended fine, no problem, but none of those calls up there should be a single cop call. And I'm here to tell you right now that beyond that one domestic violence that I singled out, there were. There were calls up in that list that were handled by one cop. Um, I will say flat out that the firearm involved with the potential standoff um, did a phenomenal job with it. Officer Courier was the first one on scene. And when he arrived on scene, I was between the Peach Farm and the Bulge. So in the time that it took me to get to the backside of the lake, Officer Courier was on scene alone. And I'll tell you that I was driving to get there with a the purpose. Staffing impact. Um, single unit response eliminates use of force options. So when we go to fill in the blank, and I'm going to use mentally disturbed individual with potentially suicidal tendencies, when one person goes to that call, we have no use of force options. If there is an individual with a knife threatening to kill himself, that cop has a gun. That's it. If we have two units responding to that, we can have a lethal force and a less lethal force alternative. I can have a cop utilizing a taser with lethal force backup, and hopefully we can de-escalate that situation and talk them down. The same goes for a one unit response, but we're taking away alternatives in that one unit response, which goes against everything that we're trying to accomplish right now in the we're trying to de-escalate everything. We're trying to have more services available so we don't have to do that. Um, my ultimate goal would be not to have the cops respond at all in a perfect world. Somebody else could deal with that, but it's not gonna happen. Uh, probably not in my career. Reduced level of experience. Most officers are required to handle a wider variety of calls. That speaks for itself. I've already spoke to that. Prior practice is not best practice. And I'll blame myself for this and I'll blame an entire generation of cops. What we used to do, domestic violence by ourselves was stupid. I learned in 1999 that you don't go to a domestic violence call by yourself. You know what I did for the first part of my career? I went to domestic violence calls by myself because that's what we had to work with. That is unacceptable to me now as a boss. Uh, I know that was unacceptable to Chief Conway. I know that was unacceptable to Chief Williams as well. But to me, I'm going to stand here. I'm going to sit here in the public and I'm going to tell you that that is unacceptable. Staff concerns and surrounding agencies make mutual aid less reliable in the past. So I guess we're going to trend into this weekend now. Saturday night should have been a single coverage night from 1800 on from 1800 to midnight it was going to be one unit from midnight to 6 a.m. was going to be me. Um, so we split a shift single coverage. One of my officers was kind enough after having drill volunteer to come in for five hours. So we had double coverage for a portion of that shift. What I received was a call at 8 p.m. saying we had a couple calls going on in the town of Barrington dug a little further into dispatch and those couple calls were a barricaded subject in a fatal collision on Route 202. So on a night we may have had one guy on, one staff member, we had a barricaded subject and a fatal collision. Thankfully, the town of Stratford didn't have any calls going and they were able to provide assistance as they often do. So we had a couple Stratford guys to come down and help us. It's not always gonna be the case right now. Everybody's short, Stratford is one unit short, Rochester's down, Quite a few. I don't know how many. Dover is down quite a few. That's not always going to be there. And we were lucky. We were very lucky. Otherwise, I've got one guy to stand off and one guy to fatal. Again, not okay with that. I got the phone call and I was here within 20 minutes, but that's 20 minutes. Um, hiring, retention, and morale. It's big because what's going to happen if we're not staffed appropriately is exactly what has been happening. My workers are going to continue to work overtime. They're going to continue to work 18, 19 hour stretches. They're going to burn out. And they're going to leave and they're going to go somewhere else, not just for money, 
but for quality of life. Staffing solution for FY 2022, I'd like to budget for one additional patrol officer in nine months, starting April 1. Uh, that gets us through voting. Let's let the voters weigh in on this. If I can get your support, let's let the voters have their say on the budget. In addition to the single FT patrol officer under fully staffed conditions will allow me to meet the stated staffing goal in most circumstances. I'm also here to tell you that we are going to have to reevaluate this in 2023 or 2024 because we're adding one, which doesn't get us anywhere near what we need to be. I'm asking to add one this year because I know what we're under for stress. I understand the COVID concerns. COVID didn't slow anything down for the Barrington Police Department. COVID increased some of our call loads. COVID increased the type of our call loads. Domestic violence did not decrease last year during COVID. Drunks did not decrease last year during COVID. That's what I'm hoping you folks will support. We're gonna have to reevaluate this. I'm asking for one, not five, not 10. Annual cost for the year is 87,234. Um, from the April 1st, 2022 start date, it'd be 65,425. That's almost six cents per thousand. Um, but the addition of the per diem, that's gonna help us pick up a little slack to begin with. It's not gonna get everything done. Um, again, Foundation for this was laid in 2018 and before. Any measure we want to talk about statistically, we are understaffed. Um, this is impacting services, impacting operations. This is impacting how we deal with our citizens, my employers. Um, that's all I really have. Uh, I will also mention offhand, and this is not in the presentation. That was not by any means something I meant to do. I was advised last night that I am going to lose one of my employees, more than likely, in March of 2022. Um, we have an employee that is National Guard. He had planned on a 2023 activation. He was told by his CO, Colonel, who probably isn't going to listen to the Chief of Police, that he is likely going in March of 2022. So this addition that we are going to add, hopefully, in, I'm sorry, to, um, that we're hoping to add, essentially will cover that spot while he's gone. And then I'll have my full staff back in 2023 when he arrives home. Um, and, and I'll apologize to the TA because I didn't even have a chance to talk to the TA about this. This came out of nowhere at me. Um, so with the addition of the per diem, if we're able to go where we go tonight, I'm going to be maintaining essentially current level through 2023. Look, Person Bailey, that call up, how long is that for? Is that for just training or is that for? Nope, that's up to a year, um, is the way I, it was phrased. I know, I was hoping it wasn't a year. But. Yep, that is, that is up to a year, and, and I'm happy to send the young man. He's a fantastic pop. I'm going to miss him, but he's a fantastic soldier, too. So they have a need of him, and we'll make do. I'll make do, but that's just another layer to this situation that I'm, I'm letting folks know about. Okay. Happy to entertain questions. Um, you had brought up a school resource officer. Yes. Um, now, in your when, when you're going through to do your reports and, and all your, uh, you know, possibilities. Yep. Um, do you already have a plan to say if you know at the school board were to entertain to have a school resource officer? Um, you know how that would play into the school as in like i i would understand my understanding of it would be the resource officer does you know at some time at the school um but is also able to come back to the the pd work uh you know at the overtimes whether you know at P, uh, ever source needs them and or if somebody calls out on a shift because they need to get somewhere early that person can cover that so i can sort of speak intelligently to this. Uh, this research was all done by Chief Williams and it, it, it kind of died on the vine. Um, the model I would use for school resource officer is similar to what Durham would use. So you've got your, your individual in the school, they do their time in the school, but they are also available to backfill shifts. So if George Joy gets assigned to the school and Friday night we have a shift open, school resource officer isn't in the school Friday night, we could utilize that individual just like a patrol officer at that point in time. Um, that would be the model I would look at. There are places out there where the school resource officer is paid 
by the school for the school year, and they don't often fill a lot of patrol, that's not the model I choose to follow. Um, right now, we are existing in a social scenario where school resource officers are being questioned and their presence in the school is being questioned. Uh, we come from an area where school resource officers are very, very highly looked upon. Durham has had a very successful program for years. Dover's had a very successful program for years. Um, Addie in Co Brown is well known to everybody and all the kids love and respect her. Um, so locally, we've got very good success rates. Nationally is another, another scenario. If the school wants to look at a school resource officer down the road, I'm happy to entertain that and have that conversation with them. My recollection, and please don't quote me on this because I don't want to upset the superintendent and I have a very good relationship. I believe the funds they were kind of looking at for the SRO went to a counselor, which was a very good use of those funds. Uh, if it's the, the young lady that I met last year, she does a fantastic job with the kids and I don't second guess that decision at all on his part, but certainly I, I'm willing to open the door and have discussions that comes up down the road. Okay. So just to let the board know why I had asked that question, um, you know, in my feeling and seeing the report that Chief George did for us is, you know, we know that we're down officers, uh, but also if you guys recall, uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily during school hours, but there was uh, not a altercation, but there was an issue at one of the meetings and, um, you know, it had made one of uh, the school board members uncomfortable and, um, you know, at being able to maybe combo in with that um, to not only get you maybe, you know, at that one officer you're looking for, but maybe, you know, if we can get another half to to at least help out. That's where I was going with that thinking. Um, but if, you, if the board is all set, Connor, if you don't have anything, um, I'm, we look forward to working with you on this, Chief. Thank you, gentlemen. See what we can do for you. Any other questions before I stand up? Vacate my seat. No, I'm just going to wait till you stand up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Mr. Chair, thank you. Chief Joy did a fantastic job, and I would urge the select board um, and any community members that are watching um, this presentation. It was recorded. We have the video. The slides are available on the town's website. Um, you know, Chief Joy intends, and and I support the budgeting for an additional full time position. Um, that will be part of the budget process in the budget presentation. And I think for a lot of residents, the headline might just be that the police department's asking for a budget increase. And so I would urge anybody that you folks interface with or members of the community that are watching at home, um, encourage residents that question the need for an additional officer or additional officers to pull up this presentation. Um, the, link will, the link to start right at the beginning of this presentation will be included in the minutes. Um, and and the chief, as you know, you just sat through, did an absolutely fantastic job um, laying out all the justification, and everything that's gone into this um, this proposal. Um, so thank you, Chief Joy, and and like I said, please please share this presentation with the folks that might question the need. Okay. Um, well, while we got you, Connor, uh, next up on the list is the 2020 financial audit review. Um, do you want to speak a little bit on that? Yes, yeah, so uh, each select board member has a bound copy of the 2020 uh, financial report. Um, a full copy electronically is available on the town's website as well. You'll remember that we changed auditors this year um, after five years with Vashon Kluke uh, to keep with be best practices, have a new set of eyes looking at our financials, uh, make sure we catch everything. And so, um, the I provided a link in my report to the uh, process we went through to select uh, Plodzik and Sanderson, which is who we worked with this year, hit the ground running. The financial audit closed a couple of months before last year. We intend to speed that up again next year and years moving forward. Brass tax, um, they had essentially six recommendations um, that they worked with us on through the entire process, things that they saw um, that that they you know, identified other communities uh, doing it a little better, a little cleaner, room for improvement, if you will. Um, so we worked collaboratively with them um, through their entire audit on each of these six items. Um, I provided notes on each. Um, you know, a lot of it is just the, the, the backup, you know, dotting our I's and crossing our T's, making sure that we have good reconciliations and good records 
um, for any time questions come forward. Um, so myself and the, the finance administrator uh, were very supportive of the recommendations, look forward to working with their guidance to implement them. Um, and uh, I guess the only last thing that I'll mention is, you know, we, uh, the end of the financial year, we estimate what the our expenditures and our revenue are going to be, um, and those don't really become final until the financial audit is closed. Um, and I'm happy to report that within less than 10,000, I don't know if it was quite less than 5,000, but um, with with very high precision, with a very high accuracy, I should say, um, we anticipated where our our close would be. Um, and so all of the numbers that I presented during the budget process last year uh, with estimated tax rate impact and all the rest uh, still hold true, which is fantastic. So happy to answer any questions. Look, person here. As long as I have been a selectman, it's recommended from the uh, Miss Valley thing that we do audits when individuals leave. So over the years, I mean, half dozen people have left different departments and stuff. And then we only do the annual, there's nothing new, they suggest you, uh, Ought to be done. We have never done that. I don't know if we're doing the future or not. And the last people did that things, I wasn't too impressed with them because it was two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars off in the conservation budget for over ten years, and that didn't jo that was that was nothing. That's a lot of money to make. Yeah. And then uh, I have to look. He asked for help to look at this thing more clearly, uh, so I understand it. Um, There's a simple farmer. Thank you. Okay, um, any other comments from the board? Okay, moving on. Um, use of ARPA funds, public safety building generator discussion. Um, Connor, when I was reading these notes real quick, um, there was a first I'm seeking. I just wanted to make sure that that was not you and maybe it was Chief Walker. I know it was me. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, so, I on behalf of the town, but. Okay. Yeah. Um, so do you want to touch on this as well? And then the board can chime in with some questions. Absolutely. Um, so one important clarification, uh, the chair and I had a chance to talk earlier today. Um, I want to be clear that the, the purpose of this conversation right now is just to get a nod from the select board if they're willing to use this funding source for this purpose. So if that's the case, then the process we would go through to acquire this generator would uh, follow the purchasing policy, follow the best practices um, and the uh, procurement requirements of the ARPA funds, starting with uh, an engineered um, um, approach to determining what our needs are, not just now, but in the future for power at the public safety building facility, um, and also designing specifications to advertise all the rest. Um, so that said, that aside, you'll remember um, back in March, we identified the need for an automatic start generator um, as a vulnerability of the public safety building, um, most notably because we rely so much on power with our data and our phones and communication in general. Um, that without power at that facility, um, operations are really halted. Um, now we have a generator, which is great, but during a critical incident, you want your people out responding whatever that incident is, not starting the generator, manning the generator, making sure it stays going. So um, that's why it was identified as a vulnerability. Um, we ballparked um, working with um, our electrician of record and uh, local generator contractor, about 35,000. Um, Chair Sakosha thinks that might be low, and it very well may be. Uh, but I wanted to at least get a, a order of magnitude, a, a scale for the select board to consider um, so you know what we're looking at here. Um, so as far as the funding source, you'll remember these ARPA funds, it'll be a million dollars over two years, 500,000 this year, 500,000 next year. Um, unfortunately, these funds are pretty restricted in how the town, how the select board is able to use them for the town. Um, and so I don't think we'll have any problem spending the money over the, the next few years. Um, but this is the first one that, that, you know, the light bulb clicked on me. This is a great use of these funds for this purpose. I talked to the, the folks at the governor's office um, for uh, 
resource and recovery gopher um, to verify that it was an eligible expense. And so um, I, I hope to have your support to use these funds for this purpose. And if so, we'll proceed with the um, getting the project engineered and advertised. Happy to answer questions and either Chief Walker or Chief Joy can chime in on the, the need or the justification for the project. Yeah, I, they say we need a generator. Um, and I couldn't agree more. Um, I've actually talked with uh, Chief Walker on this. Um, and I know this is just, you know, to, to re go over it again, this is just to use the funds to, to go forward with this project. Uh, necessarily, that 35000 isn't the solid number that they're going to be going off or, or after. Um, it was just simply to get a figure in front of you. Um, with that being said, does the, the board have any questions, concerns? Select person Bailey. Thank you. Several years ago, uh, I'm ancient history. I was involved with uh, the survey taken in town, see how many establishments had a generator just in case we had to uh, use it as an emergency facility. And uh, Chief Walker, correct me, I think we had what, seven or eight? facilities that had a generator to come back on. Now, these include restaurants, uh, George's gas station, which is no longer George's gas station. We had a very, very low number, <clears throat> and uh, we worked trying to get a, uh, a generator, and it got turned down. I think that not only should we be looking at uh, uh, that there, I would ask Connor if it's possible to use those funds for uh, the new town hall. And those funds be used to provide that because that's where we're going to be put our emergency uh, start point or what do, what do you call it? emergency uh, operation center operation operation center. And you know that when, when it when it comes time to get get fresh water, a lot of the people in uh, our community have wells and they don't uh, have a uh, generator, and uh, everybody goes down to the fire station. At least I used to until I got a generator put in, so I didn't have to do it anymore. But I think that's uh, something else that, if it was possible, be considered because I know that uh, if something catastrophic uh, came around here, there would be a lot of people looking for some help. Uh, I, I just comment to the board to look at uh, one also. Okay, and, that that'll be noted. Um, you know. Uh, shut down. <laughs> no, I just want to get back on track so well, so we so we don't lose lose focus. It was on track, I know. Go ahead. Well, to well, town hall. That, that's you know that was a whole different thing. This is for the public safety building, so that's that's was my opinion on that. Um, Chief Chief and Joy, Chief Walker, kind you of speak, coming up. Uh, speak for Rick and myself. He'll call okay. tag team in afterwards. Um, from an EOC standpoint. Um, absolutely, the town hall needs a generator for the EOC because um, the EOC is going to be operating out of there. I, I, and not by you folks, but by, I think the general public, EOC, PD, FD, if there is an emergency, the FD and the PD is going to be over at the EOC. Incorrect. Um, if there's a major emergency, and I know you gentlemen know this because you've been involved in them, if we have a critical incident, if we have a major issue, I'm going back to my house. Uh, and I'm doing my business from my house because that's where all my equipment is. That's where everything I need. That's where all my forms are. That's where all my templates are. Everything I need to exist is going to be at, at the PD. Uh, if we have a natural disaster, clearly we're going to have the EOC set up that needs to be powered with a generator. And we're going to have a designee there. But during the course of that natural disaster, even though we have somebody at the EOC, we're going to be conducting our business from the police department. Uh, when we have a, God forbid, a shooting. I need my house operational because that's where we're going. That's where the state police are going to help us out. That's where everybody's going. Chief Walker has a major incident. He's not opening the EOC. He's working out of his house because that's where his equipment is and that's where all his information base is. And again, I'm not telling you folks anything you don't know, but for the folks at home that kind of may think we're going to the EOC to do all this, not. EOC is a component. We need our houses in order. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Can you make a correction when you say house? That means your department. The police department. Your department. Yes. Um, yes, when I refer to my house, I'm referring to the police department, my side of the house. Yes. We'll go to your house to see this. Uh, you know what? I may go home too. <laughs> um, yes, my apologies. When I refer to public, the bike, public, my misinterpreted. Yeah, no, when I refer to my house, I apologize. I am referring to the police department in town. 
seems like I spend more time there than I do at my own home anyway. So I guess it's perfect. I'll get out of Rick's way because he. And, and just to go on, on record, that's and I do agree with your standpoint about the yeah. town hall. I just didn't want to get off track. No, we, no, we won't. <laughs> it was just the idea. That I wanted to see if that money. My question was yeah. to Connor to check to see if that money could be used there also. I mean, because, yeah, that would that would be great. <coughs> I mean, and, that, that survey was taken when uh, what's her name? The, was the lady? Yeah, I can't remember her name. She, Mr. She, Bailey. Uh, to your point about the generate the town hall, we have a two hundred and seventy five thousand dollar grant um, that we're in the process of uh, applying for. And it's a, it's a shoe in if if such a thing exists for a grant through FEMA for generator um, at the public state or at the um, town hall for the emergency operations center. So we will have funding available if for some reason that falls through, we could consider this. Um, but to answer that question directly, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Chief Walker. Two things you want to just I want to reiterate, which you were made aware of in March. One is not having the capability of an auto start. So again, at two o'clock in the morning at the office of the public safety bill and the police officers out on patrol and nobody knows the power's out there until the police officer goes back to the station and, and tries to determine, hey, there's no power. So at which point I'm going to get a phone call. It's going to take me 10 minutes to get across town and get over there and fire the generator. That's, you know, in a public safety standpoint um, or if in the middle of the day, wind damage, police are out, where else? The secretary is on the police side working, the power goes out and she has to wait until we can get somebody to come in. So it's definitely need an auto start. Uh, the other side of that is, is speaking to when the local contract, the taxpayer in town, uh, I spoke to him. He does generators. Uh, he came down, gave me an idea of what we were going to be looking for for the replacement of a generator. And, and his thing was, he goes, Chief, he says they stopped making this generator about 15 years ago. He says there are no parts for the generator side of this unit. Um, we've had a few mechanical problems with it. It's basically a Perkins diesel. Um, I had the luxury of having Phil Booty that's been a diesel mechanic for years that was able to find parts because, um, you know, if you pull a manual out and it tells you, it gives you a, a Chinese part number on the thing, it, sometimes it doesn't cross over. So, uh, but Mr. Noyce from the generator connection says, he goes, Chief, he says, your biggest problem is as if there's some kind of a malfunction on the generating side of that unit. He says, you'll never get any parts. He says, so the, the building will be down. So that that's pretty scary to think that, you know, if the generator goes down, we're going to be, you know, now we have to try to chase down a portable generator and then get a hold of an electrician to come in and try to make the necessary changes so that we could do. What would an ABT cost? Five, six hundred dollars. Let Chris add. Uh, since I picked on Chief Joy, now I get to pick on you. Clarification. Transfer a switch, not auto start. Well, yes, you're right. Transfer a switch. ABT. Okay. It's, a, it's an automatic transfer switch. A ATS. It's a new word for it. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so coming as select person air has a background in roads. I have a background in electrical. Um, as I stated before, I talked with Chief Walker, we went over the basics. So to get the facts out there where we're undersized, uh, there's no automatic start. Um, there should be an engineering company involved when um, we go to, uh, you know, if we move forward with this project, um, an engineering firm should be selected to come out to do a load test um, to get a calculation of what we're using and talk with um, Chief Walker and see where our future is headed so we can plan to have a little bit more as additions happen to the building. Um, by having that engineer document, it's going to tell us the size of the generator we need, uh, the load predictions, what we have for a current load, uh, what size conduit, what size wire, and then it would go out to the uh, request for a proposal um, on the town's website, I'm sure. So. Uh, that's what I know from my electrical standpoint, and I can put in for the town. Um, if anybody have any other questions, comments? Okay. Um, so, uh, Mr. Chair, 
Um, do I do I take that that there's support from the board in pursuing this process, using these funds for this purpose, commissioning the engineering, getting a bid spec put together and advertised? Yes, I, I move on that. I'll withdraw on the engineer. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll do a select person manager. Yeah. I think we're very <clears throat> we're very concerned about reducing our taxes, and all of us here hate to pay taxes, including me. But this is the safety of our community. And even if we can't get these ARPA funds, these are things that need to be done and it needs to be in our budget. And if, if it causes the tax to go up, that's the cost of, of living in a, in a safe place. So I think we, we need to look at any source we can, but we need to get this done regardless of the source. I, I concur. I think our current situation right now is unacceptable. Um, you know, and I'm not sure if we even have, you know, it as Chief Walker had middled off, you know, we'd have to get an electrician and a generator here just to even have a backup. Um, let's say Hurricane Henry hits and, you know, we're in a disaster, the other generator quits, we can't get parts for it. Now we're scrambling in the middle of a natural disaster trying to get a generator. Good luck. Um, so, yes, Connor, with that, I believe the board would like to go forward and uh, seek the funds um, for this generator. Fantastic. Thank you. I think we should put a limit on engineering. Okay. We could talk about that once we, you know, when it we goes out the bid, that should be all loaded. Yeah. And, and that'll come up. This is just for the funding aspect. All the finer details will come into play at a later date. Okay. Next up um, select, uh, select board member um, reports and concerns, starting with select person. Oh, first. Here. Oh, I really want to know. I missed conservation. Um, I was working. But then, I, was, like I said, Saturday we had a meeting with town lands. <coughs> and they approved the minutes and stuff that were going on. So they're working um, hard on a um, challenging development. And, stuff, and um, um, they have a good, good mindset and good goal. And they want to follow the same procedures as they did when they picked the Forester. And we ended up with a real good forester and stuff for the evaluation, the point scoring, the way they did it. And I'm very proud of the town lands committee how they came up with the forestry. And I have faith they're going to come up with a good plan with this new that development we're doing with taxes. Thank you. Excellent. Select person. Uh, I have nothing to report. I had a uh, condition, so I couldn't make the meetings. Okay. Select person mantra. Um, I missed both the transfer station meeting and, and the school board meetings, but the school board. Uh, has some additional funds coming through, and they had a survey that was unfortunately was due at noon today. They gave it pretty short notice. There may be some funding coming. I got the minutes from the transfer station meeting. Uh, there's some concern that trash bags or prices may be changing, and and Erin, I don't see her on our list here, but she's supposed to look that up. Uh, composting is talk to the composting people and they say that Barrington is too small by itself to so have to look at some other sources. If there are other sources of composting materials such as the restaurants or the schools, we may be able to get something done on the composting. Uh, the next meeting is on the 20th of September and the trans and the ABC has an organizational meeting the day after Labor Day on the 7th of Okay, um, and it, it seems like uh, we, we've all been pretty busy these last couple of weeks. Um, I haven't had a chance to reach out to Jesse from the recreational department, um, but as we know, the uh, slides came up for a sealed bid. Nobody bid on those. Um, we gave Jesse the necessary approvals to donate to those people in need of the slides and or find a good home for them. Um, also, school's going to be starting back up. Um, I believe summer plant uh, is closing, if not closed already. Um, Jesse is on the line. Um, can you think of anything else I'm missing, Jesse? I don't think so. Okay. I just wanted to update everybody and just let them know that our gym floor project was unfortunately uh, postponed due to materials not being in on time. Um, so we will be uh, starting that project the Tuesday after Labor Day and shifting over to the town hall. 
Um, but besides that, we're just, you know, continuing. We had a large software update, so we should see some improvements with the residents utilizing that. Um, but besides that, we're just rocking and rolling. Okay, and as we know, uh, Chair, Chairman Knapp is not here to give his review. Um, so with that, we're gonna open up uh, public comment. Thank you very much. I just wanna to say to the board members, I'm very disappointed in the vote taken on the uh, uh, building permit. Thank you. Select personnel. Daniel, yeah. 334, Old Concord Turnpike. Simple person, but um, everyone wants Barrington to stay the same. We're all in country living, but when society is changing and stuff, and people demands some people want everything in the city and stuff. So they're gonna have to make a decision when it votes. I don't think it falls on me. Is with the expansion in the town, you want the city life? You're gonna pay for it for everything or the town. So it's a reflected in your tax bill, all these luxuries. So it's, I'll be spending the money, but it's going to be up to the taxpayers what they don't want to do. Okay. So if there's anybody participating um, via Microsoft Teams, you can raise your hand, put a comment in the uh, chat box. Um, I see we have one part person participating on a phone. You can press star six if you'd like to wager a comment, wait to be recognized by the chair. Wait a couple of seconds here. Anybody chimes in? Not seeing anything lighting up on my end, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, with that, I would like to close public comment. Um, brings us down to line 13 on the agenda, and there is no reason to my knowledge for a non-public session. A perfect read. It's really perfect. Honor's not here. Uh, With that being said, do I have a motion? No. Uh, to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Roll call vote, please. Air I. Manager I got it. Air Leo. I. Thank you for attending the meeting. <laughs>